Hey guys, are you ready for the next big, big MTG scam? Well, I'm going to present it to you. Now, first of all, I am going to be incredibly critical of the concept of MTG futures. This is a card game that you play. Unfortunately, the card prices have gotten so high that a website like this, the brainchild, I mean, when you start off by saying the brainchild of your name, it's already bad. A Magic the Gathering, okay, since the release of Fallen Empire circa 1994, he created MTG Futures by marrying two of his areas of expertise, Magic Cards and Finance. As a numbers man and certified accountant, he realized there was no way to capitalize on the, cert on the certainty a particular card would rise in price other than buying that card directly and hoping for the best. MTG Futures changes all of that. Now it's possible to capitalize on that value and you can do it right here. This is exactly what you think it is. And before our, all the YouTubers get on and start telling you to sign up and get the coins and the Puka points and all this great stuff, I'm here to tell you that this is terrible. This is a terrible concept. I don't trust the single individual, the single individual. One person is running this website. <laughs> you know, like when you talk about futures, right? Like futures in commodities like oil, gas, coffee beans, who cares? Well, that's like a lot of analytics. That's a lot of people. But anyway, let's talk about how this works. Award plus contracts. Let's say that you think a card market price is too low and is bound to go up. Instead of buying and selling actual copies of the card, you can purchase an award plus contract. Here, the problem is how buy list works. I've always explained buy list to you this way. You need a card to double before the buy list starts moving at all. And that's if it's a very high value card. And this is the same here. You So award plus contracts are for cards you think are underpriced. Award minus contracts are for cards you think are overpriced. MTG Futures lets you profit on the card know-how without the inconvenience of buying and selling actual physical cards. So this guy is not buying or selling the cards that you are buying and selling. He's essentially insuring the contract, which means he's going to either make money or lose money. But he'll never ever lose money because the card cards would have to double in buy list. The whole premise of this uh, scam is the buy list thing. Retail, it's really easy for a card like Seed of Innocence to go from five cents to twenty dollars overnight or ten dollars overnight. But that buy list doesn't move. So here's what you're doing: you're essentially just donating money to this dude. Again. This dude has no, he's not going to take a loss. Money is not magically appearing. If you had a contract for, he's using ancestral visions or uh, time walk. Let's say you have a contract for time walk. He doesn't physically have a copy of time walk and he's not buy listing copy for you. Let me repeat that again. There are no physical cards involved. It's futures. And the reliability of payout is dependent on one single individual. So if, let's say, you, you really hit the jackpot, you would never get paid because, oh, website's gone. Oh, this guy's gone. It's quite simple. Unless he has a million dollars in escrow or some huge amount in escrow that can cover loss, or maybe he has an insurance policy, He's never going to pay you. It, it's super simple in my mind. This guy's never going to pay any of these people. Because he's he's not even an LLC. He's, I mean, this is not the way to do a future site. Like, my gosh, like, this is, like, if anything, this shows you that the secondary market should be regulated by our, the government. So I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm sure that your country has regulations and Europe especially has harsher policies, definitely in the advertising arena. 
So and Germany has very strict policies on selling and trading magic cards. So what we have here is the epic of scams, and I guarantee you very soon YouTubers will be promoting this to sign up and make money. So here, like, there is no way for this guy to lose money. If he does lose money and the contracts come up, he can just refuse to pay them. And he can do personal bankruptcy, and that's how he's going to do it. But like the most likely scenario it is structured based on the buy list, which means you are at a severe disadvantage. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, that's exactly, you know, I, I want to put money into this, right? Because obviously this is super professional and I want to just spend hundreds of thousands of dollars into this. How much do contracts cost? Contracts are 10 to 20% of the locked in market price. For example, if you buy a contract that locks in a price at $1, the contract costs between 10 to 20 cents. So, whoa. Not only are you at the severe disadvantage, and in here he doesn't really even mention like what prices are going to go off and you know how would you tell, but it's definitely buy list. It has to be buy list. Buy list, you're already at a 100% or 50% disadvantage. For a one dollar card to become two dollars, it's still buy listing at a dollar. A retail card at one dollar does not buy list at one dollar. It buy list is probably at fifteen or twenty five cents. So for that one dollar card to go to two dollars, maybe now it buy list is at fifty or seventy five cents. You're still not going to make money. You would need that one dollar card to go up to free four dollars. And then he takes off the ten to twenty percent off the top. The risk-free interest rate of a free month U.S. Treasury bond. There's a guy promoting a new website right now on several MTG-related subreddits. It's a total scam. Upvote to get the word out. So I'm going to save everyone a click. The site bases its contract in the card's market price but pays out when the buy list price changes. How a market and buy list price calculate doesn't say it. The contract price also has a blank of fees, an interest rate, and a numerical modifier based on the likelihood of the card's price will change. <laughs> this is the definition of the... You would have to be a total idiot to think this was a good deal. Like, you would have to be... My gosh, like, I, I don't even understand. Like, but Puka Trade works, right? So, like, I don't... I mean, maybe enough people, like, want to do this that, like, they just get hosed. And then, and then suddenly this dude is going to go on, you know, a venture capital and they're going to laugh at him. Just like they laughed at PicoTrade. PicoTrade went on all these startup things for venture capital and the dude kept being asked, uh, Eric Freeman, uh, he kept being asked, hey, is a Pico point or, or is 100 Pico points always going to be worth a dollar? And there's video of him on video to quote potential investors saying, yes, it will always be. That's not true. PicoTrade makes most of its money from inflation. That's where all the money came from. It came from the people who gave money in for points. The people who are silver, gold, bonus trade. You know, I mean, this is even worse in my opinion. Like, this is far worse. And now it's being promoted by this deuce bag. Like, I, I don't know how else to say it, except this is the most terrible magic product I've ever seen. Not because the concept is bad. The concept I don't agree with, but if done properly with the correct regulations. And if you had somebody who said, all right, I'm going to put a million dollars in escrow. I'm going to do a third party who's going to make sure that this money will be paid off on contracts. And that's what we're going to do. And the buy list is going to be from this website. Or most likely, hey, we're going to use TCG player um, mids, that's going to be the buy price, and the sell price will be a buy list from Car Kingdom or Channel Fireball. That still a terrible deal because you're going to get destroyed in a buy list. That makes more sense to me because, okay, that kind of makes sense. But taking arbitrary, it, it's so arbitrary in terms of how you get paid, what you get paid, and then now there's like all these arbitrary fees. I mean... The only other worst idea I've seen is when you could rank cards, and, and this mentions it. Like five years ago, there was a big deal where you rank cards, 
but you're literally paying like 30 to 40 percent for a week of renting the card that's like why wouldn't you just buy the card and then sell it back for buy list because it's very similar so you would rent a card for an event they would ship the card to you again another very awful terrible concept and that didn't work yeah i think the kickstarter got like like tens of thousands maybe hundreds of thousands people really like kickstarting terrible concepts because hey what why not burn money right like that's how to do it but anyway i'm here to warn you this is the this is the worst um i slaughter pico trade pretty much on a daily basis um, i used to but this one has a lot more um i mean i mean it's one dude it's one dude probably not even like in a regulated country what was his name again his name is like some what if he was in like a country in the caribbean and there was no laws and then he wouldn't the contract i mean the contract will not be honored that's pretty simple anyway bye guys